Good day, guys. Hope we're all good. Uh, we're just going to get started with C300. I think I gave a signal there, a sell at 43, at 44.80 something. Let me just confirm. Uh, 4483 okay we have put sales in motion right the reason i'm selling this the reason i'm selling this um would be because price for me i feel like price is set a peak for the day here then we had an order block here which was broken and retested twice So I still feel price can potentially drop to the 200 EMA here, which is about, uh, let's see, 123 pips. So we can get a 100 pip drop right now on C300. So we've got a position. So let's see how that plays out. So. Let's also see where they can retrace to because I'm still bent on selling. So if they do pull back up, it's either they're pulling back up into this area. Uh, these are just minor zones where price can pull back into, but otherwise I'm seeing a sell here, especially if we uh close below this zone then i'll be looking to add more positions uh so that's my view on c300 this is also a retracement which we're trading since price has been bullish let's see since price has been bullish now remember yesterday we waited for it here we didn't get anything they came here I didn't get anything solid. I don't think I took this move. I'm not quite sure. But yeah, this was the closest thing to your setup this year. That was the closest thing to your setup because I think it also played paid out about a hundred pips as well. So today, more or less, uh, looking for price to retest maybe here, then drop to the two hundred. Uh, then I'll just keep an eye because they can actually uh, continue pushing down and we can add on to the sales. But for now, this is my current view. This is my setup. If price does come back above this area, then I might look to cut my loss. Or if we close above the 13 EMA, I might look to cut my loss. Then I'll wait to, uh, for another confirmation for me to actually take sales. So that's it. And at the same time, I think we should pay attention to the one minute time frame in case we get a gap. We want to utilize on that. If we do get a gap, since we have a bias, we should capitalize on that as well. So that's my view on uh, C300 at the moment. C1000, I'm not sure if people caught this setup because we only had these two zones yesterday, this one and this one. So price came here, created a pet, and then they sold off nicely. Uh, so today what I'm looking for is for price to interact with this zone, possibly a continuation sell to 59.50. So remember on this one, uh, is it this one or is it C500? We're always saying price can potentially push to the weekly low. So I think it's... Uh, setups which look almost the same, but again, price can potentially push to fifty nine fifty, which is the weekly, uh, a weekly zone, a weekly price zone. At the same time, if you see also that price did not pull back to retest most of the zones we had, so just pay attention to how they will act to our minor zone, uh, to get to a target. Otherwise, price might actually be pushing up. So we just keep that in mind but otherwise short term we're looking for a reaction on this zone 
So it's an area from yesterday. It was broken, uh, hardly retested. So I'd love to see price take out liquidity above these areas, right? I potentially tap into this area, maybe give us a pattern uh, before I actually uh, consider taking sales here. But for now, this here is my point of interest. So that point of interest is around between 6,000 and uh, 6,010. That's uh, the range of the point of interest. So we'll see how price acts on that area. So that's my view for C1000. Uh, C300, uh, we only have one runner. You want to be careful with this one. Uh, with the way it moves, you don't want to lose capital, but I still feel we can get at least 50 to 100 points on this one, or 50 to 100 pips. We should be able to get them. Uh, C500, you can see already a position, so you can sell C500 at CMP, but again, just be in mind, price can potentially come to 3445. 3445 is just an order block which price left just now. So I'm also looking at things like divergence uh, between this point here, which is this point, and uh, this point here, which is this point. So here we've got equal highs here, we've got uh, a high high. So for me, that's a divergent setup. Uh, price broke uh, an order block here, didn't really retest it, and they broke the zone here, which looks like it's the one who should be retested. So 34.45 is a sell limit, which can actually pay as good. So what am I looking for on C500? Uh, I'm looking for price to at least come to the day's lows, right? So I'm looking for a drop to the 200. Then if price shows signs of breaking, then I'm looking for price to push all the way to yesterday's lows, right? Maybe they might continue down, but our immediate setup is based on this area. It is based on this area. So that's my view for now. If price does come back above, again, uh, be in mind price can still create equal highs. So if they do come above the zone, We'll cut the loss, then we'll wait to see how they act on that zone. Potentially, they might give like an M and we can still sell. It will still be valid. Uh, but for now, this is the current setup. In 34.45, I'm going to have a sell limit. So I'm going to quickly put a sell limit on 34.45. Sell limit 3445. Okay, I've put it using my phone. So you, if you notice, I think it should be there. Right, there it is. Sell limit 3445. So that's my current view. I'm just keeping it simple and everything. Remember, um, I think yesterday we had a sell setup here or here. It's something we spoke about where price just broke and reaches. I think it was here, if I'm not mistaken. They just had a continuation ran without pushing back into our zones. So those are just some of the things you need to pay attention to. So if you approach the charts with all these possibilities, it's easier to actually execute a trade when price comes to your zone because you know what you'll be anticipating. So... C500, I'm bearish. It's it's an active trade right now. C300 is also an active trade. I think we've got a gap. Let's confirm that we've got a gap on C300. Okay, we've got a gap, 97.81. Since we've got a gap, there is a gap, how to trade gaps, I already spoke about it. If you have a bias and you get a gap, you run your FIB and um, depending with what the gap is on, you can have a position at current market price 
So we already have one position, which is fine. So we're going to have a cell limit at equilibrium. Uh, equilibrium is on 4488. Okay, we're going to have a cell limit there. We're going to have a cell limit at 61.8 level on the FIB, which is 44.90. We're going to have a cell limit there. Uh, can we have one more, I think? The last cell limit, we're going to have a cell limit on um, 70.5 level, which is 40.92. K So if you're looking on my chart, you see the limits are there. Let me see if I zoom in, it will be feasible. Let's see. But if you're on your charts, I'm sure you can follow the values I'm saying. Have your limits there. Let's see what price will do. So we'll come back to it. Our limits are there. Where does the stop loss go? Stop loss always goes above the last high on that time frame. So our stop loss is right here. But the way our stop loss is placed, you should also understand that it's near a zone where price can just take us out and drop. So you want to manage this accordingly, or maybe let's see how M5 is looking like. So we're trading our gap strategy. We currently eight out of eight of all oh, of the gaps we've noticed since I mentioned it. I think we've had eight gaps spread around all the the boom and crash, and we've taken eight trades, and all eight have played out. This, uh it can play play out. It might not play out. So that's why we have a stop loss. So again, on M five, you see that our stop loss. Same level, it's right on our zone. I would love a stop loss to come above this area. So just manage your trade accordingly there. Uh, we'll see how price will be actually retracing, but I just want to get our 100 pips uh, so that we can be done for the day. Uh, C5 is pushing up. C... C1 is still pulling back up to the zone, so let's go to B1000. B1000 is already in motion. Can we jump into this train? What, what's the reasoning for us to jump into this train? Our daily is bullish. Uh, I'm not sure how much momentum we have here. Mm. Yeah, they can play out. They can pay out here. Let's see. Okay, so we're going to jump in on uh, B, B1000, but I'm going to execute this on another account, not this one. Uh, B1000. We're buying B1000 at current market price right now, 14150 Fourteen one fifty. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Okay, buy is open. Okay, I'll open this buy on another account, which is not this one. So this one is only dedicated to the C3 and C5 trades. So again, you don't want to take all trades on one account because that also messes up your risk. Unless, of course, your account is big or unless your risk management is on point, then you can proceed to take the trade. But we are actually buying B1000 at current market price. Okay, I think all our limits are active for the gap. We'll just check it just now. So B1000, I'm not looking for a big trade. I'm just looking for a small scalp trade here. Uh, you can see this price has been motion, in motion since yesterday. Those who bought yesterday and held B1000 
paid well. So you can see all these blues are we we actually bought uh we did I buy this? I think I bought it here. The retraced. I'm not sure, but I was in this trade at some point. I think I took my profits in the top here. I was done because I was only targeting 50 pips. Then all these blue arrows are areas where we could actually have bought this uptrend. And uh, today's trade, we're just scalping right now at current market price. That's my view. So... Okay, let's move this to here. So we'll see if that plays out. So C5, C3, C1. Mm, C1, this is a familiar candlestick that might spike from here. Though I won't take it, I'll wait for price to come back to the zone. So let's focus on C1, right? For now, let's see if it's going to pay us. So C1, I C3, I love to monitor it because the way this asset moves, you don't want to have multiple positions and then end up holding a loss because it will mess up your account. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. The gap, was it a fake one or what? So let me also update this into the group. One, two, three, four, okay. Right, the four hour candle is about to close as well. So if we can hold, I'm sure it will pay us definitely. Uh let me share this trade in the telegram group as well. So I'm going to share the C300 trade just because it's a gap trade. Uh we're going to share it with the group so just give me a few minutes or two let me just update in the group All right, uh, done. All right, so let's continue. So I'll, I'll come back to it just now. We don't want to hold it for long in case it doesn't play out. Okay, so V251S faked out a buy, which we scalped yesterday. And today, if you ask me, I'll say we are bearish, so I'm leaning on sales at the moment. Since I'm leaning on sales, what's my point of interest? Uh, but break up block here i've got a zone here at least rather use this they can still come into the zone they can still come take out these highs here right on the 200 ema but my bias is sells and if price decides to move down Without retesting, this is where I'll be looking to execute on today's lows. I would love to get a break and a retest of uh, that low. So that's my point of interest. Initially, we can drop from, from here. So if we drop from here, I'd love to enter it somewhere around here. If we do come up here, I want to wait for a possible pattern, then price to break something before I enter. Or they can come up, take liquidity at the top here, then sell. So that's my view on V2501S of sell buyers. J10, we've had a sell buyer since yesterday. I hope you guys caught it. 
Yeah, initially, this was my point of interest. We had a short term trade here. We came back above the uh, a bit late into the day, but we already reached the target, our daily target, so we didn't chase this one. So today, I would love to say, um, I'm still bearish. This is a point of interest for sales. This is a point of interest for sales. So if you pull back into any of these zones, I'm looking to take sales from there. I don't want to take its current market price because we've been selling since the open. So I want some form of retracement uh, before I can execute on these ones. So those two zones, the red line and the gray zone on the H1 chart, it's an order block and, uh, and yesterday's lows. That's where I'm expecting a pattern. So either price will create our sell pattern here or they will create our sell pattern here. So again, we're keeping it simple on J10. That's it uh, on that one. Then B500, okay, before we look at this, let's see this one. Uh, a tiny spike there, nothing to work with. So let's wait for it. Give it time. C5 pulling into our sell limit. B1, we'll wait for it. Uh, B5, let's see. This zone here, which I had yesterday, price is broken it, so I will just remove it. The way we've been pushing down, you see, there's no retracement. It's 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 such a sharp angle. So on such a sharp angle, before I consider any buys, I want to see how price will play around these lows, because this low was retested here twice. Price might bounce here, maybe extend, then give us a pattern. So I'll just keep an eye on this. Although I'll say we are in a downtrend, so we don't want to trade against the trend. But if we do get a retracement of that sell, we are going to take the buy. So going back to C1, let's see. So we just focus on C1 until the end of the zoom. Uh, let's see if it plays out. If Sorry, why am I saying C1? C300. If C300 plays out now, I think that will give us our daily target and we'll actually be done with all trades with the other indices or with the other setups. So I'll just leave my screen on C1. Uh, because it moves fast, it shouldn't be a long um a long wait either. It will hit our stop loss or it's going to pay us unless they decide to go sideways, which is usually rain after a gap. Uh, but let's wait and see. So my current, my last position here, which is active is 44.92. 44.92 will reach the 50 pip mark at 44. 4442. So you want to mark that on your phone. 4442. If we do play out, that's where we start to scale out. That will be 50 pips. Then the 100 pip mark would be at 4392. Uh, again, on C300, just mark 4700 as a point of interest I had it marked earlier. So we might push down now, but we might find that price will remain. It might get, it might remain bullish actually to go tap 4700 before we get sales. So just keep that in mind. Let's see what happens to our gap right now. Right, I'll just keep keep browsing through where we have limits, especially C3. C3, I love to get a sell here because the price action I'm seeing on each one, right, a minor divergence. Um, then price comes, bounces off the baseline, bounce. 
variation of a shark fin, a broken order block, which is possibly being retested. I would love to get a good sell here. So let's stoke on C3, C500. Let's see what happens with it. B1. We also don't want to hold a loss there, like a big loss. So we're just risking. Uh, let's see what's the risk from where we entered. If we can risk at least 25 pips to make 50 plus, that will be fine. It's C300, which are more worried about or which are more focused on. Because this one, a small move alone can mess up with your day, you can mess up with your capital. But let's see. Let's see what's going to happen with that gap. Uh, what's this? The 200 EMA here is a possible zone. Like I say, do you see this area we have? A possible zone where price might want to come tap and drop, but the way we are in this trade, remember we don't hold losses above fifty points. Anything above fifty points, you know, you are violating the rules of trading C three hundred. So that's what we want to keep an eye on if we are retracing how far is this retracement before we push down. This is yesterday's highs. So price might drop down here to give us a flip zone before it continues up. So that's the buy. That's the sell we want. That's the sell we in. Right. Let's see how that goes. Let's see how that goes. Uh, we left three minutes for the four hour candle to close. I'll still say my money is on the sell here. Yeah. The only thing I'm worried about is price might want to take us out before they drop. But we'll stick with our rules basically. We just go with our rules here. Let's see how that goes. C500. Our limit is about to activate on uh, C500, we're about to activate a limit here. Okay, let me just check something on C3. Everything looks all right for the cell. B1 looks like um, it will give us what we want. So what I'll do is on my um, on, on my B1 trade. Yeah, I actually wanted to add the position, but you can see there's a spike there before I add it. But uh, let's see how big that move was. Nah, it's not really a big move. So I'm going to add one position on B1. 
If we can get to 14,200 on B1, 14,200, 14,205, 14,210, that will be perfect. We can scale out because that will be 50, 50 pip move. All right, let's see. So the four hour candle is closed. What can C300 give us here? Yeah, we're just going to wait. Either they take us out or they pay us one of the two. Okay, we've got 10 minutes left in the session. So we'll just wait those 10 minutes and see what happens. Uh, B1. So 14,200 is somewhere here. Okay, that's the target there. B5, J10, V250. C4, C3 looks like it wants to come and I would be happy if it comes and just pays us quickly before we end the session so that we know we are done for the day. Whether it moves 50 pips or it moves 100 pips with that gap, um, that will be enough to hit our daily target. So this is also the reason why I love uh, just trading only the pairs you see on the bottom. And again, it's not all of them I see uh, which I trade. Sometimes you might get setups forming on all of them, but you find that will oh, only execute one. You get it. You don't need to trade everything. And it's, it's mainly like scanning for one, which is going to set up emotion, executing it. If it pays out, Done. If it's a loss, then you can. If your loss was uh within your rules, then you can still look for another setup, and you can still trade. One thing I'll emphasize is do not over trade. Do not over trade. Do not over trade. Because I always see as much as we might share signals. Say two, three, four signals in a day it doesn't mean you should take all those signals. Just take one, if you agree with it or if you have the same view, just take one uh, one trade. If it plays out, you're done. Don't keep chasing uh, the setups or keep chasing price, wants you to make more. Because more times than a uh, few, you end up losing what you've made. It happens multiple times. So if you make your money, call it a day. Don't chase price. So let's see. Our gap is right here. This is where the gap ends. So uh, I'll love to see price coming. And giving us what's due to us at 50 points 50 pips that should be perfect 100 pips is a bonus so 
We've got five minutes left in this session. So I'll just keep scrolling across the assets we've looked at to see if there is anything approaching our entry so that we can actually execute. I think C5 is active now. C5, the limit is active. And we we have a tight stop. The if price just comes above that order block which we're looking at right now, we're going to cut loss. Price comes above this zone here. We cut loss because they might still be coming to the equal highs again before they sell. So it's always good to cut the loss fast. Otherwise, if the session ends before we get our move on um C three hundred, then I'll just update the results in the group in the Telegram group. We've got four minutes left to this session. C five hundred active. C three hundred active. So usually when I have two active trades, or B1 is also active, but uh, B1 is just a minor trade. So what I love to do is I love to close, not close as we say, but minimize the other tabs so that I can just focus on what I have my trades running on. So I've got... Uh, C four C three hundred on the left, and I've got C five hundred on the right. So this way I can easily just monitor if it's if there's need for me to close one and leave one, then I'll do do that. If there's need for me to close one and use that leverage to add onto the other one so that I can recover a loss or maximize on profits, then I can also do that. So let's put exact values here. So 45.20 is where our price can push to for falling. Forty five thirty three. Let's just make it thirty. Okay, perfect. So price can pull back into these red lines before our drop. Let's see how that goes. Okay, it's just a minute left to this Zoom, so I'm just going to end it now. Then I'll share the results and any updates in the Telegram channel. So C5, this is still a good zone here to get sales from. And we've got our gap in here. 
So if our stop loss can come above here, that will be perfect. So if you violate this, the price might actually be pushing up. So this will be a loss, which is still fine. Uh, C300 stop loss is just above the zone. 44, 30, 34, 55 stop loss. Uh, where's our C500 TP? So C500, okay, let me advise in the group because this session might end before I explain. But remember, for every 15 pip loss, you want to target three times what you're risking, or two times what you're risking. It's explained in the group how we trade. I usually don't explain it during the live because we already speak about it. 